Uh, Eddie Murphy is another guy you've worked with a lot. Uh, my love affair with Eddie Murphy started on, on uh, coming to America when I did a test of him as the old Jewish man. And that was something like 15 separate appliances. Wow. And that was the one I was scared the most about because Eddie Murphy doesn't look like an old Jewish man, you know. Not and, even remotely. No. And when I got him in the chair and, you know, I put the first piece on him, which was like a cheek or something, I saw him looking at himself in the mirror and making faces and, and seeing what it did, you know. And when I got the whole makeup done, he just said, you know, I can't believe how good this is. I mean, I can't believe how real this looks. Yeah. And I think the old Jew that I do is too much of a stereotype for as good as his makeup looks. So he goes, I want to I wanna try some different, different stuff, you know. So I got a video camera out, pointed it in the mirror, and he started trying these different voices and doing these different things. I mean, it was just amazing watching what he did and the characters that he became. And that started the way we do, we, every film that I've done with him, we pretty much have done that. I don't think any actor in their right mind likes sitting in the makeup chair for hours every day on end, you know, and in the process of some joker like me putting glue on your face and poking you all day long. And Eddie always says, you look at me like an object. And then I come up and just poke him, you know, and he goes, I'm a human in here, you know, so just stop it. You know, just don't <laughs> You're move. distracting. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> But he's such a great mimic and, and be, can become so many characters, you know. Some of the characters, I didn't know what, what I was going to do for him. There was this uh, bad lounge singer. I asked John if he could talk to Eddie and if Eddie could do the voice for me because I thought maybe when I heard the voice, I could put a face on it, you know. And Eddie says, I don't know what it's going to be. When you give me the face, I'll put a voice yeah. to it, you know. So that's how we do it. He doesn't tell me anything about the characters. What, the, what he wants them to look like. You know, I make them up, sit in the chair, and we, I start feeding them stuff, you know? <laughs> you know? And on the Nutty Professor, you know, when he played all those characters, they were gonna cut that stuff out because he could only be one character a day because of the makeup time, the removal time. And somebody who was just looking at the bottom line on things said, well, if we had five actors, you know, and Eddie just played one of them, we could make it, you know, it'd be- One day? Yeah, you know. Better, <laughs> you yeah. know? Cheaper is always better. Yeah, so I, you know, I had gotten at least to a, a point on the, where I had a couple of makeups pretty close to done, and I said to Eddie, I said, we have to show him, you know? So yeah. put him in the chair, made him up as the mother, and this was the first cast we got out of the mold, and the seam wasn't cleaned up on it, and, and I wasn't even quite sure how I was gonna do the makeup, you know, but it, it was an emergency, you know? Right, so right. stuck it on him, stuck a wig on him, you know, for the beginnings of a mother suit with these big boobs and stuff, and got out the video camera, you know, and, and Eddie says, oh, well, I, I don't, I don't, I haven't really, th I don't even know how I'm going to play this yet. I don't know what I'm going to do. And, you know, he, as he starts saying that, I go, tell me about your son Sherman, you know, uh -huh. and then he just goes into it, you know, he didn't, that's Perfect. all it took, you know. Perfect. So, you know, and he just played with different voices and things. And it, next day I made him up as a grandma, which he knew how he was going to play that. Yeah. And we cut some stuff together and sent it to a, uh, uh, the, the Universal people and said, you, you know, you tell me you want to cut this shit out of your movie, you know, and, and so. And comedy history was made. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from working with uh, particular filmmakers repeatedly, you've also worked with uh, particular celebrities. You did Thriller with Michael Jackson mm -hmm. and uh, I was one of the zombies mm -hmm. on the team. I remember there. very clearly, yeah, and, and Cynthia uh, as well. But you also did personal makeups for Michael too after mm -hmm. that. I didn't. Never? No. You know? He talked to me about it, and I didn't do him. Other I people, thought he asked you to make him up to go to Disneyland. He did. I didn't do him like that. Oh. He's, he's asked me, um, he wanted me to make pieces for him, disguise pieces and stuff, right. so he could go out. But he wanted to put them on himself. And he, I, I really felt he, we couldn't do what he really wanted, and he couldn't put it on in a way. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a picture in the National Enquirer of Michael with a afro wig on and his face painted gray and it said it was a ten thousand dollar makeup by you know makeup artist rick baker you know great nice commercial yeah you know it's, and that's exactly why i didn't want to do it you know um but <laughs> unfortunately i got credit for something i didn't do anyway you know? <laughs> but i have done celebrity disguise things for other people that i won't tell you who it was but right. 
But yeah, it was great to work with Michael, and, and, and he was an amazing talent and so sad. Had a wonderful experiences mm -hmm. with him. Yeah. yeah. Well, the tools are changing. CG has become such a crucial part of it. Mm -hmm. You've just experienced that, I guess, with the Wolfman mm -hmm. remake. Mm -hmm. Here you're remaking one of the classic Universal monsters. I imagine that was an exciting prospect for you. Well, yeah, I, um, like I said, I've always liked werewolf movies and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, um, when I heard that Universal was going to remake The Wolfman, I just thought, wow, I'd really, I'd like to do that, you know. Okay. And seriously, I don't know how I've been successful because I don't have an agent and I don't advertise and I, my f studio number isn't even listed, you know. Mm -hmm. And I like people to come to me. Uh, I don't like to go out and try to hustle jobs. Yeah. A couple times in my life I've actually pursued jobs. One was Ed Wood when I heard Tim Burton was doing Ed Wood. I called up Tim and said I want to do it, you know. Another Oscar winning job. <laughs> uh, it was a fun job. And it was a makeup. It was yeah. turning Martin Landau into Bela Lugosi. One that I just wanted to do. I mean, first of all, I like Edward movies, yeah. you know. And uh, I'm a Bela Lugosi fan, you know, and, and, and a Tim Burton fan, you know. And I just thought, how, how cool would this be? And those kind of makeups are hard to do. And it was really a less is more get the effect of Bela Lugosi without piling a bunch of rubber on. But but back on The Wolfman. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I actually went, yeah, I'd love to do The Wolfman, that'd be so cool. And I just liked the idea that Universal was making uh, you know, a remake and hoped that it would be good, you know? yeah. and, and that I might be able to work on it, and that I hoped that maybe they would consider makeup as an option still in this right. digital age. And turned out the first director on the film, Mark Romanek, uh, felt very strongly that it should be makeup, mm -hmm. and actually was a fan of American Werewolf and liked the idea of, of me doing the makeup on the film and, and uh, so that that all kind of worked out but yeah it's a the digital age you know and when it first started I I explored it I said that well I, I, I want to see what this is you know and and oh, it was just so foreign to me you know yeah. and just so not organic and anything I saw that anybody was doing was not organic and I just said you know what this is not for me you know yeah. but I you know I've been using Photoshop for like more than 20 years now doing my designs and uh, there was this program called ZBrush which is a, a digital modeling program that was designed by a guy who was not only a programmer but an artist and he made it much more like real world sculpting and I started playing with it and it was like love at first sight it was so much like sculpting but it was on the computer mm. and you had the advantages of what you have on the computer I mean you can save it and go back to it or you know uh, or you can cut and paste, you know, and it's like, oh my God, it's like, I call it no fear sculpting, and, you know, right. and it freed me up design-wise, loved it, you know. Well, you have to embrace digital technology now if you're a creature creator anyway, and it's gotten so sophisticated that it does look real. Yeah. Oh, uh, it, used properly. Yeah, oh no, it's great. And, and when digitals first started, we were all of a sudden became the dinosaurs, you know, the guys that did the rubber stuff were these old school, were the di you know, dinosaurs, were the new guys, you know. What's nice now is they're embracing our knowledge, you know, right. and I was involved, he heavily involved with Benjamin Button on the digital end. Uh, right. And the guys at Digital Domain came to me and, and, and said, you know, you guys know how to make people look old, you know, how to, what flesh looks like, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And they really wanted our help and knowledge and experience to help them make it look as real as possible. Well, the more tools you have in the box, the better artist you're going to be, it seems to me. Well, that's what I think, you know, and, and I, like I said, I, I have fun with the digital stuff. I mean, you know, I've made masks and done makeup for so many years, and, and you know, the, the, the thrill quite isn't the same, you know. Right. And so my hobby now is I do digital models and play around and with this stuff, you know. So I really embrace the technology, and again, it's another tool in your toolkit like you just said you know it's 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 another way to do things and to mix it up you know so uh, what's your favorite part of the process is it the design is it the sculpting is it the creation is it watching the final product all of that really I mean what 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 I really like is when you have this idea and sometimes it's even a vague idea you know and you know that in a matter of time that idea or this image that you have in your head is going to be there in front of you looking like a real live living breathing thing and acting and, and being alive you know and then the other thing is you know you're going to go to the movies at some point and somebody's going to see it and respond to it and and, and it's just so cool i mean creative people i think have to be creative i'm never bored 
you know. I, you know, I don't want to stop, you know. So, you know, stay up all night working on little silly things, you know. It's so, great to be able to do what you want to do. Many times I think it's a curse, too, because, you know, <laughs> you care so much about your work, and, it, you know, and, and it can be very hard in the movie business, especially uh, when you care. But I get paid to make toys and play with them. And I, I was told when I first started meeting people in the industry that I was never going to get in. I, I was told by people in my union, you know, the people in that union at the time that I was never going to get in and they were going to make sure I never got in, you know. And I just couldn't believe that if I was, if I got really good at something that somebody wouldn't hire me someday. And everybody, even Dick Smith said, you, you better have a f plan B, something to fall back on, because it is really tough to get in the movie business. And I didn't, you know, and thank God it worked out or I would have been on the side of a freeway with a cardboard sign saying we'll, we'll make a mask for food or something. You know, so. <laughs> Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you for having me, Mick. All right. Great.